Hi, welcome to Redox Reactions Part 1. My name is Dr. English, and today we're going to talk about revisiting oxidation numbers just one more time before we start talking about redox reactions. So the first thing that we're going to look at is how to assign oxidation numbers again. Then we're going to go over the rules of oxidation numbers and free elements, the rules for oxidation numbers and neutral compounds, some common oxidation numbers, oxidation numbers and some exceptions to the rules, steps for assigning oxidation numbers in compounds, some examples, and then finally at the end, a little bit of practice. A review of how to assign oxidation numbers. So what is an oxidation number? An oxidation number is the charge of an ion or the apparent charge of an atom in a compound. So oxidation numbers are assigned according to certain rules. They're generally going to range from negative three to plus seven, including zero and they can be found on your region's reference table in the upper right hand corner. So if I look at potassium down here, I see that potassium has an oxidation number of plus one, and for chlorine as a nonmetal, it'll have a range of oxidation numbers, the most common one being minus one, but it also has the ability to be plus one, plus five, and plus seven. And one thing that you have to remember is this is just selected oxidation states. There could be other oxidation numbers out there for these elements, but the most common ones that you'll need to know how to use are the ones that are found on your reference tables. Let's go over some rules for oxidation numbers in free elements. Remember, the oxidation number of every atom in a free element is zero. So a free element is defined as an element not combined with another element in a compound. So it's freestanding, it's alone, it's by itself. Some examples of this for metals might be something like magnesium or copper, calcium, iron. For non-metals, these are your diatomics, so oxygen, hydrogen, chlorine, fluorine, nitrogen, iodine, and bromine. And then some other non-metals that are not diatomics, such as carbon, phosphorus, sulfur, selenium, so on and so forth. So when you look at these examples, one thing that you need to remember is that each of these will have an oxidation number of zero when found alone in a chemical reaction. And we'll look at that in some more detail in a moment. So let's talk about how to assign oxidation numbers in neutral compounds. In ionic compounds consisting of monatomic ions, each atom has an oxidation number equal to its ionic charge. So what do we mean by that? Well, let's look at our first example right here. CaCl2. I know that the most common charge for calcium is plus two. So I'm going to write a plus two over the top of that. And I can use my reference table to figure that out. Or I can just understand that this two right here would be uncrisscrossed back to the calcium. And then for chlorine, if calcium is a plus two, chlorine has to be a negative number. So in this case, chlorine is going to be minus one. So minus one times two gives me minus two, therefore the overall charge is going to be zero. Let's look at FeCl2. Again, I can look at this two and I can uncrisscross this. So I know that in this situation, the Fe is going to be plus two. And that's important to realize, especially when you're working with transition metals. Chlorine at the same time, if iron is plus two, chlorine has to be minus one. Minus one times two gives me minus two. And again, I have a plus two and a minus two, so they're going to cancel each other out for an overall charge of zero. The last example, FeCl3, again, I'm going to look at this three, and I'm going to uncrisscross it, so the Fe has to be plus three. I know chlorine's going to be minus one. Minus one times three gives me minus three. And with the plus three and the minus three, those two charges will cancel each other out for an overall charge of zero. Now let's just look at some common oxidation numbers that are always going to repeat themselves. Any element found in group one will always have a charge of plus one. So some examples here, sodium will always be plus one, lithium, potassium, anything that is in group one will be plus one. Group two elements will always be plus two. So in some examples might be calcium, which is plus two, magnesium, which is plus two, and beryllium, which is plus two. Fluorine is our nonmetal that will always have an oxidation number of minus one in its compounds, and that is definitive. One other thing that I'd like to mention is that in group one here, I'm just talking about the metals. I do acknowledge the fact that hydrogen is affiliated with group one, but hydrogen is its own special case considering that it's a nonmetal. Now let's talk about some exceptions to the rules when assigning oxidation numbers. Oh, look, it's hydrogen. 
in most compounds, hydrogen is going to have an oxidation number of plus one. Now there are some exceptions to this rule because if you look at your periodic table, you'll actually see that hydrogen can be plus one or minus one. The only time that hydrogen is going to be minus one is when it's forming a compound, so forms a compound with a metal. Then it will have a charge of minus one. These are known as metal hydrides. So if I were to look at these here, I'd say, okay, lithium has to be plus one definitively has to be plus one, cannot be anything else. Therefore, for this to be a neutral compound, hydrogen has to be minus one. I have a plus one, a minus one, the whole thing is going to be equal to zero. I know that calcium, based on the previous slide, has to be plus two. Therefore, if calcium is positive, I'm making a hydride here, hydrogen has to be negative. So negative one times two gives me negative two. This is plus two because there's an assumed one right there. So this whole compound is going to be electrically neutral and zero. The other exception that I'd just like to bring up is the exception of oxygen. Now, under normal circumstances, oxygen is going to have a charge of minus two. On a very rare occasion, you might see oxygen having a charge of minus one in situations which are known as peroxides. One peroxide that you might be familiar with, of course, is hydrogen peroxide, which you can get at a local grocery store. If we look at the example down here, I have H2O2. Now, hydrogen can only be negative one if it's with a metal, so hydrogen has to be plus one here. So plus one times two gives me plus two. The whole thing has to be electrically neutral, so this has got to be minus two. Therefore, in this situation where I'm dealing with this peroxide, oxygen is going to be minus one. So minus one times two gives me minus two. Whole thing's electrically neutral. Now let's look at some steps for assigning oxidation numbers in compounds, and we're already familiar with this. We're gonna go through this pretty quick. So step one, assign oxidation numbers to atoms in the formula in accordance with the rules above. In other words, look at the elements and say, oh yes, that's group one, that's gotta be plus one. That's group two, it's gotta be plus two. That's fluorine, it's gotta be minus one. Go with the elements that you absolutely are sure of knowing the charge. If there remains one element for which no rule applies, give that element an oxidation number that will make the total for the compound electrically neutral, in other words, equal to zero. And if you're confused by this, we'll be going over some examples and doing a little practice in a moment. Now remember, the total of the oxidation numbers in the compound must equal zero. We are dealing with compounds which are neutral. And also, remember to multiply the oxidation number of each atom by its subscript number, and you've gotta pay really close attention to that. So let's talk about some examples of how to assign oxidation numbers to neutral compounds. The example that we're gonna look at here is H2SO4. So if I look at this example, I say to myself, all right, the first one that I know is hydrogen, and hydrogen has to be plus one. So I'm going to write a plus one over the top of that. And then I can say, okay, plus one times two, because the subscript is two right here. So that's gonna give me an overall charge of plus two. So I'm gonna have a plus two written down here. I'm gonna skip the sulfur for right now because I'm not exactly sure what that charge is going to be and go on to the oxygen. Now again, I know about oxygen. Oxygen is gonna have an overall charge of minus two. So I'm gonna write a minus two above that. So minus two times four gives me minus eight, which is confirmed by what I see over here, which leaves me finally with sulfur and with sulfur, there's no rule that directly applies to sulfur. It has a number of different oxidation states associated with it. So I know that I need a number that's going to make this whole thing electrically neutral. So plus two minus eight, and if you can do the math here, you'll see that the number that we need is plus six. So therefore, sulfur must be plus six in order to make the whole compound equal to zero because plus two plus six minus eight will give me zero. Let's look at another example, K2Cr2O7. Group one elements are going to have an overall charge of plus one. So we're going to put a plus one over the top of that. So one times two gives me plus two, which is confirmed down here. Chromium, again, I'm going to leave because there's no rule that directly applies. So let's go on to oxygen. Oxygen is going to be minus two. So minus two times seven gives me minus 14 which again is confirmed right here. If I have plus two and minus 14, I know that this number must be 12. 
must be plus 12. So what number times 2 will give me 12? Since no rule directly applies, I can work this math out to figure out this answer. So if you said, oh, it's plus 6, you're right, because plus 6 times 2 will give me 12, and the whole thing will be equal to 0. So you just want to pay really close attention here to make sure that the formula is electrically neutral. The one thing that you do need to take into account here is that CR does have a subscript of 2, so any original oxidation number that you might be using has to be multiplied by 2 to get, in this case, to the plus 12. Okay, so let's do some practice here. We're going to do two examples together, and then you can try the rest on your own. So let's look at the first one. Carbon in H2CO3. When I look at this, I say to myself, all right, hydrogen is going to be plus 1, so 1 times 2 gives me plus 2. I'm going to skip the carbon. I'm going to go to the oxygen. Oxygen is minus 2, so minus 2 times 3 gives me minus 6. whole thing has to be equal to 0. So what number do I need to put here to make this electrically neutral? And it is going to be plus 4, plus 4, because 2 plus 4 gives me positive 6, minus 6. The whole thing is going to be equal to 0. And remember that one thing that you really want to be careful of here is that if you have to record your oxidation numbers at the end, always go back and make sure that you use the original oxidation numbers, not the numbers after they've been multiplied by the subscripts. Let's look at another example, Ni and NiBr3. In this case, we're working with a transition metal, so I want to look at this 3 and uncrisscross it. So the Ni is going to be plus 3. There is an assumed 1 right here, so 3 times 1 gives me plus 3. Bromine is in group 17, so that I have an overall charge of minus 1. So minus 1 times 3 gives me minus 3, so the whole thing is neutral. Everything's equal to 0. So I want you to stop, take a moment, try problems A through F, then you can come back and we'll see how you did. Welcome back. Let's see how you did. So chromium and Li2CrO4. I know that lithium has an overall charge of plus 1, so 1 times 2 gives me plus 2. I'm going to skip the chromium. I'm going to go to the oxygen. Oxygen is minus 2. Minus 2 times 4 gives me minus 8. The whole thing has to be equal to 0. So in this case, chromium has to be plus 6. Plus 6 down here just to double check, and everything works out. Nitrogen in NO3 minus 1. Now here I'm working with the nitrate polyatomic. In this case, it's not going to be equal to 0. It's going to be equal to minus 1. So I'm going to start with the oxygen first. So oxygen is minus 2. So minus 2 times 3 gives me minus 6. So this has to be equal to minus 1. In this case, nitrogen has to be equal to plus 5. Because plus 5 minus 6 gives me negative 1. Now let's look at nitrogen in ammonium, which is definitely different than the charge is going to be in the nitrate ion over here. Again, this is a polyatomic, so everything is going to be equal to plus 1. Hydrogen, I know, has to be plus 1 because it's not with a metal. Only with a metal would it be minus 1. So 1 times 4 gives me plus 4. In this case, nitrogen is going to be minus 3 because minus 3 plus 4 gives me plus 1. Now let's go to Zn and ZnCO3. I look at this and I know that zinc only has a charge of plus 2 on my reference table. Oxygen is minus 2, so minus 2 times 3 gives me minus 6. whole thing has to equal 0. Bring the plus 2 down. In this case, the carbon has to be plus 4. Plus 4. Now let's go to AlOH3, and here we're working with parentheses. I know that aluminum only has a charge of plus 3. Subscripted 1 right here. So I'm going to bring that plus 3 down. Now in this case, I have to be careful because this 3 is going to distribute over the oxygen and the hydrogen. Oxygen is minus 2, so minus 2 times 3 gives me minus 6. And then hydrogen is plus 1. Plus 1 times 3 gives me plus 3. Plus 3 minus 6 plus 3. And strangely enough, everything seems to work out. Finally, let's go to chlorine in GaClO33. I'm going to uncrisscross this, and gallium is going to have a charge of plus 3. Oxygen, I know, is going to have a charge of minus 2. So I have to be careful here, because minus 2 times 3 gives me minus 6. 
times 3 again, which will give me minus 18. So the whole thing is going to be equal to 0. I'm going to bring this plus 3 down because that 3 is not going to affect the gallium. The gallium has a subscript of 1 here. Then I have to look at this and say, all right, what number down here is going to make this whole thing electrically neutral? And I know by doing the math, it's going to be plus 15. What number times 3 gives me plus 15? It's got to be plus 5. My final oxidation numbers for GaClO3,3 is going to be plus 3, plus 5, and minus 2. So what did we learn? Well, we went over how to assign oxidation numbers. We looked over oxidation numbers in free elements, oxidation numbers in neutral compounds, common oxidation numbers that you're likely to see, some exceptions to the rules, going over again the steps for assigning oxidation numbers, some examples, and finally a little bit of practice at the end. Need more help? Feel free to contact me. Have a great day.